All right. So taking a minute and loosen the uh, original HDS Live 12 inch that was on my dash. Um, if you watched my video a few weeks ago, I installed a new Bass Boat Technologies dual mount. Um, my plan was to have the pros ready for the install. Um, timing just didn't work out. So obviously with me fishing throughout February, I needed to get these going. So I just installed my 12. So loosen the nubs, taking off my cables. Take the last one off there. And as you notice, because of the HDS 12 is outlined not blue, that's a 12 inch live. So that will be coming off the boat or probably just be moving to a different place in the boat. And just to kind of go over a few things. Um, this is how this boat set up. I'm just going to be installing one pro today um, just because that's what I've received so far. I want to get this kind of set up and turned on so I can start to learn some of the new features. Many of you guys know that I ran a TM165 HW transducer. That's where this one comes in. This is my original 3-in-1 AI2 that's going to be pulled out um, and then pulled off the boat once I receive that new flush mount. Power cable, got two Ethernet cables. Okay. One will be going to the bow, including my active target. I've already got an active target too installed on the boat. And of course my NEMA network, which is going to, you know, control my ghost and all my other functions from my motor and my everything else that runs off that network. So, like I said, here's a new HGS Pro, very similar style, so no changes that way that's going to be exciting um, plug and play basically so i've installed the knobs i'm going to go ahead and install these cables like i said i'm just using the ai2 3-in-1 for now until i get my new flush mount bracket and then i will pull that through as soon as it's available so TM-165, power cable. Second, Ethernet. Nemo is my last connection. Make myself some more room. There we go. We're just going to tighten that up, set my angle for where I want it. Still make a fiber cloth just to remove the fingerprints. Okay, so there we have it. That's how quick it takes to go from a 12 Live to a 12 Pro. Let's turn this on and see what happens. That's exciting. New splash screen. I'll turn on my Live at the same time just so we can see the differences. Yeah, every time we fire up a new unit, we're going to see some device configuration screen. Configure this device. Yes, I always use mile per hour. Lakes, regular fishing, and finish. Now, this is something that I want to share with everybody. 
Um, yes, we want to perform an auto data source selection. So hit OK. During this screen, uh, model boats a lot. I notice that people just ignore this. After you power this up about three or four times, you will see right in here a little box that says, do not ask me again. So after about the third power up, select that, hit not now, and then it will stop asking you this. It's advised that you go on, complete your registration, go through the website as it shows here. Looks like it's now a link. But for now, I'm just gonna hit not now. Okay. Everybody always asks, why are we in Tulsa when it powers up? Well, that's probably the last place that it was powered on from the factory. So that just tells you where it's coming from or where it's been programmed. Um, a couple things it's already picked up on is my autopilot. I have an outboard autopilot on this boat, Marantz Outdoor Outboard Autopilot, and it's picking up my ghost trolling motor already. So just some of the features that you can adjust while you're setting your graph up. I'm just noticing that my 12 Live isn't picking up my Aramar at this point because I haven't set up my sonar sources. So some of the quick settings that I'm gonna do, number one is I'm gonna to go to my sonar and I'm going to select the installation. Now because I've hooked my TM165 up to this unit, I'm going to be using channel one TM165 as my source. So once I select that, it's already self-selected. That's why it's showing grayed out. I always name it on the graph so that I know exactly which sonar I'm looking at. So TM165 HW. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put Pro. That way I remember that it's connected to my HTS Pro. It saves me looking in the back or when I start switching things around I remember that it came from this graph. Enter, save. If I go to more options, I'm just gonna turn it on quickly just to kind of, it should still recognize that TM165. Might take a minute. Out 13 is my preference. Okay. Obviously no GPS fix because I'm in a steel building right now. I can see the sonar just coming up, so I know that it's reading it, so I'm not going to leave it on, just because I don't want to burn out that TM-165. Okay. A few other things that I will do with my sonar is sensitivity. I know I'm going to be plus two. It's just my, traditionally my starting point. Frequency, I leave it on 200. Um, it is a high chirp transducer so you can run it on high chirp that's fine that's uh, recommended but i just happen to prefer 200 kilohertz for the most efficient that i do so that's how we're going to set things up on the sonar side of things and then we're going to go back to our charts and if i was outside it was it would be able to find me um i'm in the great lakes area so obviously you know, looking at the Great Lakes map, you know, I'm just going to go to an area that I don't fish, so I don't give away some of my friends' favorite spots, but I'll go down to my friends in Ohio and show you where they're fishing. Okay. Overlays. Every time you make a new page, you're going to need to add your overlays. So just for an example, I'm going to make a split screen. In fact, there's already one here, but I'm just going to go through the motion of showing you how to make a split screen just so that we can show you the overlays. So as you notice, a little bit different backsplash on this one. We're going to add, we're going to drag a chart and a sonar, and you can add anything else, side scan, down scan, active target, all that stuff. Obviously active target I have to turn on. Hit save. Remember, I stopped that, so that's why it's showing stopped. I'm going to hit power. I'm going to edit overlays. And I'm going to hit add. The first thing that I'm going to do when I 
select and overlay is the most important thing to me supply voltage check mark you'll see it pops up here at the top and from there i can drag and drop it wherever i want traditionally i always have it in the bottom left corner and i'm going to make it as big as possible because when you're running four or five graphs it's important to be able to see your supply voltage make sure that you're not running it down you know aerators live wells radios you name it everything's running off of this page so next thing we're going to add is water temperature same thing okay so as you can tell we're in my shop right now showing 45.9 degrees fahrenheit in my shop and you can drag it and drop it hit save again okay so just a few things that I know that I need to do. Next one is going to be through GPS speed over ground. Again, pops up because we don't have a GPS signal right now. You're seeing the three dashes. I can make that bigger again and I'm going to leave it in the top left corner. Just a spot I normally like to place it. Uh, so a few other things that you can look at while you're in here. Um, course over ground, position, I don't get into that too much. I try and keep my screens decluttered as much as possible. Um, I do add and subtract them throughout the, the year, depending on what I'm doing. Um, drifting down the river, um, trolling shallow water, I don't need it. Time, um, I'll put the time up if I'm fishing a tournament and I need to know when to be back in time so I'm not constantly looking at my watch. Um, it also helps when using the uh, autopilot features and uh, distance to travel and stuff like that. Fuel tanks, stuff like that. Again, you can go through all that stuff and add and subtract that when you feel necessary. But those are the three main things that I use at this point. Um, obviously, I'm probably forgetting something, which I can add quickly at any time. So I'm just going to close that, save that. And as you can see, that's how easy it is to create a split screen and add your data overlays. And just a quick rundown on how I set up a graph for the first time. So I can technically fish this right now. Like I said, I will probably tweak it once I get on the water, remember what else I need to put on here. But those are some of the most important things that I will do to start with. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Again, this is my HDS Pro unboxing and setup for the first time on my Ranger 621. Thanks, guys.